Uh, so, um, you know, uh, there are commonalities in the approach of both India and the UN uh, towards their orientation um, in a global way. So I'd like to draw your attention to the foundational documents that the UN and India have. So the preamble of the UN Charter starts with the words, we the people of the United Nations. Similarly, the preamble of the Indian Constitution uh, begins with, uh, we the people of India having solemnly resolved and then it goes on. So uh, you can see that uh, in terms of our founding principles, there was a commonality. And that commonality has, of course, over uh, the last, uh, say, 75 years, uh, uh, exhibited in cooperation in various uh, fields. Uh, when we were looking at uh, what, how better to improve that, we came across this quaint uh, organization in the UN setup called the UN Postal Administration. And um, this was in 2016. Um, that year uh, was important for us for two reasons. One, it was the 50th anniversary of um, Bharat Ratna MS Subalakshmi's uh, concert at the UN on the UN day because she had um, uh, been invited and was uh, the artist who sang uh, in 1966. Also, 2016 was um, the centenary anniversary of um, uh, uh, MS Subalakshmi. So we thought that could we work on something uh, which is uh, a fitting tribute to this intersection between a great artist and the UN. And that was the basis on which we approached a, the UN Postal Administration and explained to them the background uh, of 50 years of this uh, event, uh, going back to 1966, and MS Subalakshmi's own birth centenary in 2016. And they were uh, very receptive, and that's when the journey began. What we then did was that we uh, had this uh, inaugural event uh, commemoration on October 2nd, uh, which was an important day for us. So um, the UN is a platform where uh, people from different cultures, different civilizational practices, and different countries uh, intersect. Um, and yes, the focus is on political issues, on um, uh, global economic development and social um, areas. However, there is an important underpinning to this and that is the culture of peace that the UN wants to promote uh, requires also a better civilizational understanding. And that was the theme of um, Dr. M. S. Subalakshmi's um, uh, famous uh, bhajan, uh, which uh, was actually an ode to global friendship. Um, it's very interesting. It was uh, written by then the Shankaracharya, uh, who was a sort of a spiritual guru of uh, M. S. Subalakshmi and who composed this specifically for that occasion. And the UN was the right platform for that. Uh, since then, uh, we have uh, demonstrated in many other ways that the world is one family or Vasudeva Kutumbakam is a common belief of many civilizations. It dates back in the Indian uh, civilizational ethos to hundreds of centuries, but uh, in different ways, it's reflected in different civilizational uh, thinking too. So culture um, uh, is a reflection of um, centuries of uh, thinking of a civilization. And um, it underpins uh, a better understanding of uh, uh, global brotherhood or commonalities. And the UN has, um, since the 90s, been focusing on the culture of peace, uh, better understanding of civilizations, 
um, it's also a platform for pluralism. Uh, so in all these aspects, um, there are potential uh, avenues to cooperate and expand better understanding. So we started with the uh, MS Subalakshmi's uh, ode and invocation to uh, uh, global brotherhood, but there were other aspects which we thought we could utilize. For example, um, in 2016, for the first time, the UN expanded the number of holidays it has. Uh, there are some holidays which are fixed holidays, which are fixtures, but at that stage, uh, there was a feeling that these do not reflect the sentiments of other parts of the world. So um, going back to 2015, uh, there was a discussion in the UN General Assembly and the number of holidays were added to and what was called was floating holidays were added. So one of the floating holidays was Deepavali or Diwali, the Indian festival of lights. There was another one, I think it was Yom Kippur. Uh, both these are um, uh, age-old traditions. Uh, they reflect uh, universal values and they reflect uh, common basis on which the UN Charter exists. Um, so this was a, another um, facet of civilizational understanding which we thought we could use. So the next year, after the first uh, year in which uh, the floating holidays uh, concept came into being, we then requested the universal, uh, sorry, the UN Postal Administration to consider uh, using some of the photos that were available uh, at the first celebration of Deepavali at the UN. And so uh, there was a stamp which was brought out uh, in 2017, which added to the global understanding of uh, a certain principle, which again uh, is common to the ethos of many civilizations. Um, Deepavali stands for um, the uh, fight between good and evil. That's a constant uh, discussion at the UN. It uh, embodies itself in many ways. Uh, also, it's a um, uh, celebration of victory, of uh, righteousness uh, over uh, evil, or lightness, uh, light over darkness. Uh, again, this is a constant endeavor of diplomats at the UN. So it was befitting uh, uh, the, for the first time the UN building was awash with Deepavali uh, colors and was lit up and it was a proper uh, way to uh, commemorate this on a long-term basis. So Diwali um, is um, of course um, uh, Indian in origin uh, but it's celebrated by many, many member states. There are more than a dozen member states of the UN who celebrate different aspects of uh, Diwali and um, whose populations are um, uh, uh, embedded in that ethos. Uh, so we did have a considerable support from others who were also celebrating Diwali. Uh, that was one thing. The other was that, uh, uh, as I mentioned, that uh, victory of good over evil is a global norm. Um, it's something that enthuses everybody. Um, it's there in many civilizational uh, thinking, in uh, the thinking of many civilizations, but uh, many didn't know what it embodied for a country like India and for those who celebrate it. So um, it uh, did gather a lot of uh, interest because many realize that uh, what they were doing in terms of practice was a precept which underpinned uh, the civilizational ethos of India and many other countries. Also at that time, um, there was an effort uh, in the United States uh, to uh, have a Diwali stamp. Um, again, that was a long-standing effort uh, by uh, some uh, Indian groups. Um, there was um, um, uh, a, a very, very strong movement, uh, which led to the finally, um, the uh, issuance of a Diwali stamp by the US Postal Administration, which was again very popular. So the atmosphere was perhaps conducive, uh, both in the United States and at the UN, 
for it to succeed i was just a small catalyst in that uh, effort well um you know uh, the issue is that uh, um india's association with the un is uh, unique in many ways uh, it is uh, a country uh, which was there at the time of signing of the un charter although we were not independent and um, uh, since then india has um, been participating in a diverse array of un activities um for example peacekeeping uh, decolonization uh, striving for nuclear disarmament promoting sustainable development and working for global good uh, the un postal administration is a unique phenomenon it uh, uses stamps to record this intersection of member states and the un in common uh, pursuit of global good uh, so the stamps that have come out uh, by uh, through the un postal administration is only a reflection of the very many ways in which india and the un uh, cooperate towards global good so gandhi ji was a global icon and an advocate for the most vulnerable uh, he was an icon for peace um, his uh, thinking today is imbued in very many aspects of the un's functioning yes peace is one aspect non violence is another aspect but uh, as we look forward there are aspects uh, which have not been highlighted previously but are now gaining salience for example sustainable development and climate concerns about the environment uh, gandhi these thinking uh, presaged a lot of what we now are looking for uh, in terms of uh, our um, uh, um, efforts to have uh, a sustainable lifestyle um, similarly uh, his concern for the most vulnerable uh, is reflected in the sdgs thinking about leaving no one behind um, so uh, there are uh, gandhi ji's philosophy uh, has been embedded in many many ways in the un's own orientation and that's why there is a resonance of his thinking uh, in the un uh, it's not only in the un uh, more than 100 countries have uh, commemorated uh, gandhi ji's uh, uh, 150th anniversary uh, in 2019 uh, in different ways uh, more than i think about 80 have in fact even issued stamps uh, so this uh, global uh, similarities uh, in the thinking of a individual um, who we are grateful uh, led our own uh, uh, battle or fight for independence um, is actually beyond india uh, it's a global movement uh, that gandhi ji reflects and that the un reflects in its work every day so uh, the gandhi stamp uh, is a culmination of uh, years in which we have worked with the um, un postal administration i must compliment them because uh, they have many unique uh, facets uh, they are not very well known but uh, it's the only non country and non territorial institution Uh, that is allowed to issue stamps uh, it issues stamps in more than one currency again it's unique i think it issues stamps in three currencies in uh, new york in dollar terms um, in uh, geneva uh, in swiss francs and i think in vienna in euros so it's a unique um, establishment which records history which is able to um, uh, uh, capture and promote uh, the diversity 
of interests of UN members and how they coalesce with the UN's day-to-day -day functioning. So when we were thinking of all these, uh, we thought we will do multiple things on the 150th anniversary of uh, Mahatma Gandhi's uh, birth. And one was the stamp, but we thought that the stamp should not be confined only to um, uh, peace and security because uh, there was already a facet of that uh, in the International Day of Nonviolence on October 2nd that we celebrate. So we looked at other uh, facets uh, of highlighting Gandhiji's legacy and his commonalities with the UN and we came up with his uh, advocacy of uh, environment. So what we felt was that uh, we would have an event whereby uh, um, on a long-term basis uh, India would uh, provide um, uh, energy to the UN Secretariat and the UN uh, conference uh, facilities um, which are environmentally friendly, which are low carbon, uh, renewable in nature. So um, in 2019, we established a Gandhi solar park on the rooftop of the UN um, to ensure that it is uh, owned by every member. There are 193 panels on that. They symbolize every UN member being partic uh, participating uh, in that continuous effort to energize the UN. That was the second element of uh, Gandhiji. The third element was uh, for the first time an Indian Prime Minister decided to host a meeting at the UN premises uh, to commemorate another great Indian, Mahatma Gandhi. And to that we invited the Secretary General, but we also invited very many different um, heads of state and government to commemorate Gandhiji's memory. So um, on that day, the stamp was released, uh, the solar park came into being, and a commemorative event of prime ministers uh, commemorating an Indian at the UN took place. Um, these three things together uh, were a effort at uh, soft diplomacy, at uh, viable diplomacy, at sustainable development, but also forward-looking diplomacy, which would have a long-term effect. And every year now, um, the UN uh, conference building is powered by this solar energy from uh, the Gandhi Solar Park. So on the one hand, the stamps reflected capturing uh, an essence of Gandhi and the solar park reflected a continuous uh, tradition of support to the UN from Gandhian thinking. Well, you know, um, it's uh, difficult for a person to choose between his five fingers. I can't choose uh, 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 which would be the best because um, each stamp has a story. Um, they are not only uh, uh, tokens of payment of postal taxes or uh, for sending messages. Uh, every stamp helps transmit a different idea uh, via circulation. Uh, it ensures the longevity of a thinking uh, and people who buy it and reserve it claim a certain connection to the event, to the principle, to a shared history. Uh, they recognize it not only as a source of information but as a part of history that they can relate to. So uh, I am uh, wedded in many ways to all of them. Uh, each has a story, each has a background, and each is memorable in its own ways. Um, so for me, they're all uh, my favorites uh, because uh, I have worked for them in ways uh, that many people did not realize uh, it was important. But to me, uh, it is a lasting uh, um, reflection of India and the UN are working together to promote each other's values. Uh, 
um philately is obviously a, for the last i would say um uh, 100 more than 180 years or uh, 170 plus years a remarkable way in which uh, people have been attracted to uh, the dissemination of ideas um it is a hobby that generates a lot of interest globally for people would like to find out slices of history that they can relate to uh, however uh, we can see that uh, as um, digitization is proceeding uh, and communications are changing uh, snail mail as they say may uh, not have the resonance that it used to have uh, uh when say i was growing up as a child um there may be less need for postage stamps as uh, tokens of uh, uh currency to send documentation from one place to another but that doesn't mean that uh, philatelists will lose uh their roles as cultural currency entirely uh, philately to me is a cultural currency um it has value beyond money it has value beyond history and it has value in that it promotes shared uh philosophical ideas which are important uh for as an underpinning to many of our day to day activities whether in peace and security or in economic development or in understanding humans better so that role of philately and stamps is i hope uh going to be everlasting well i would just like to um, thank the un postal administration because um, they were understanding of the way uh in which we were trying to um enhance engagement uh with the un uh, many times uh, they were uh, amenable uh to uh, printing uh, these stamps at short notice usually they have uh, a two year period in which they plan for uh, we didn't have the luxury of uh, planning such things so much in advance uh when we started off and um, i uh, remember uh, many of their senior officials uh um agreeing to cut short their usual uh, uh time frames uh, because they understood the importance of these uh, stamps for uh, uh the indian mission but more importantly for promoting a better understanding of india globally so um, we owe a debt of gratitude to those unnamed uh, senior officials who have made this happen